All right, guys. So it's about 15 after 20 after six o'clock in the morning. Today's gonna be my first video log of doing a cardio ex exercise with the Testudo carrier plate. So I've already walked out of the apartment complex and did a couple of stretches just to get the blood flowing. So I, uh, I kind of wanted to make this video for a couple things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try to prop you up in the plate carrier. I don't know how well this is going to work. Ah, there we go. And I'm not sure if you can hear me or not. I've got my headphones on, but the phone is right next to my, my right underneath my jaw, so... I apologize if uh, audio gets kind of fuzzy after this. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little power walk first before I get started on my jog exercise. Okay, so like I was saying, I wanted to make this, uh, this video log on a little bit of information that uh, probably people aren't getting on a daily basis. So I'm gonna cover a few things on the coronavirus. Yeah, I know it seems to be the talk of the town lately. And um, I really don't know where to start off. But, uh, let me go ahead and start off with the stuff that's hard hitting in your face. Facts and uh, information that you may not be aware of. So, and uh, I'm just going to say, if you do get information, just make sure you get your information from credible sources. Don't just listen to one opinion and make your own opinion based upon one person, right? So, um, I listen to different people. I'm not going to state who they are because, you know, depending what information you get, you might not know about them or do know about them uh, you might just they might just be discredited just because of who they are so this is just my opinion uh, this is my opinion based on the information that I've gotten uh, over the course of time of the month and a half because I started following this in uh, late February, early March, and uh, at that time, Wuhan, China, was basically um, not even in, well, say in the six-digit range range of of infection. Uh, I think at, when I first started watching. They had just got to 7,000 infected people in Wuhan, China. Now, Wuhan is a, a province similar to what how we have states in the U.S. So, it's a province in China. And, like I said, uh, there's some uh, misinformation so, come to find out that this virus, uh, 
is in fact bioengineered. Uh, it has uh, three different types of virus um, spliced in to this what they call novel virus and the reason why they call it novel is because it's never been seen before not that is coronavirus hasn't been seen before coronavirus is just a blanket word to describe certain types of viruses now that could be the flu mers SARS, stuff of that nature. Those, those are what are considered coronaviruses. Now, what spliced into this COVID-19, as they started calling it, and now they keep changing the fucking name about it. Well, what are they, uh, so what's actually, you know, in this new virus, this novel rot virus. Well, <clears throat> come to find out that when I say it's bioengineered, it has HIV delivery system spliced into the makeup of this uh, virus. And it also has a third component. And I don't, I don't want to give you the wrong information, so just as a disclosure, I could be wrong uh, about this third one. But it has MERS. So, in other words, this is a supercharged version of the coronavirus. Now... There's these labs that do do this type of splicing and modifications. So, uh, class four bioweapons um, labs. These, these labs are only supposed to be able to do this kind of work. And apparently, they have class three um, labs that are working on this type of work. And when I say this type of work, um, they call it uh, gain of function. And you can look all this stuff up. Uh, they try to supercharge these viruses with certain type of functions, a gain of function. So whether it's super viral or whether it's super deadly or that it doesn't kill its host as fast but spreads dramatically. So that's what I mean by gain of function. Sorry, because there isn't, um, not every virus can do the same thing, not every virus can actually last the same amount of time, so there's, uh, there's these viruses that either are super potent, but burn themselves out because they kill their host too quick. Or there's the kind that, like I said, does, doesn't burn their host uh, too quick, but can last for a very long time, but isn't as viral. And uh, what do you mean by viral is its ability to transfer from host to host. Now, I know... Um, I know you're thinking, well, you know, they said that it came from Chinese people eating bats and 
other kind of, uh, I guess you would say, um, delicacies, if that's the word you want to use, other delicacies. But the truth is, is that this bioengineered virus was originally worked on by different countries, mainly being the U.S. Now, what happened was there was some information that was discovered that there is a lab in North Carolina in the U.S. working on this kind of research and possibly the theory is is that this research was then had Chinese students from another country obviously China coming to work on the same type of gain of function type of research. It's not to say that they were working specifically on COVID-19, but one way or another, this information was leaked whether Obama sold it to certain individuals, and yeah, I just said Obama. People are like, what the hell, what does Obama got to do with it? Well, during the time that this virus was worked on, guess who was in office? Obama. Yeah, I'm not putting the blame on the guy. The guy was a piece of shit in the first place. <sighs> But I know that's going to offend a couple people. I really don't care. So, this thing is bioengineered. It didn't come from uh, zoology, I think is what they call it. It's the, the ability for a virus to come from zoo animals. Um... Yeah, kind of not what you're being told about this, right? And I know, I know we heard on the news, oh, okay, we'll treat it like it's the flu. You know, you can't treat this like it's the flu, because obviously, if it was like the flu, people wouldn't be panicking over this, because the flu kills probably... Dozens of thousands of people annually. And you don't ever see people stocking up on toilet paper. Which is pretty fucking stupid if you ask me. Which I've had multiple friends on Facebook point out. I can't believe people are buying toilet paper in mass. But won't buy uh, immune boosting supplements and medications to help them defeat this virus if they were to ever catch it or the family members to ever catch it. I thought it was real funny, you know, because I had saw that beforehand. Now, let me just say this. When I first, when I first knew, when I first got my first red flag that this could be a problem was <laughs> it's a uh, pretty funny because I, I think it's funny now looking back at it, but I went into Walmart um, and this this virus was just being broadcast to the U.S. and we were just looking at it and Wuhan had seven thousand infections. And this is very early on, even at Wuhan, China. I went into Walmart, and 
I wanted to buy some antiviral masks. And I just so happened to be searching for this masks before anybody else was thinking about buying it all up. Well, guess what? There was Oriental people buying it up in bulk. Almost like they knew. Now, you got to keep in mind that China has gone through this type of scenario more than once. They've had czars break out. These people were prepared. These people have been through this before. And to think that it got to epic proportions just in China, the way it did, kind of makes you want to think, you know, whether it was accidentally leaked or whether it was on purpose. Because in either way, in either scenario, you would think that China... China would have been way more prepared than the United States is as far as handling this type of scenario. Which is pretty scary, but I do think we did things late. I do think that the president was ill-informed and was being misled at the beginning of all this and we could have closed our borders and stopped international travel and had screening done a month ago you think if it was done a month ago we could be saving millions of lives at the end of all this uh, we probably still are We still are going to be saving millions of lives by catching this early on. You know, people don't know this, but that's why I'm saying we were late reacting to this. And so let's uh, let's go ahead and talk about this Testudo plate carrier. This thing is heavy. (laughs) And I'm not saying that because uh, I'm trying to um, I'm trying to make it look like it's you know, heavy duty. Now this thing after a while does weigh on your shoulders. So this is my first time wearing the Testudo vest um, in a uh, training exercise. And I'm saying training exercise because um, I am training to be a level 3 and level 4 security officer. Um, I got laid off at the beginning of this coronavirus epidemic. And I believe my company foresaw the economic implications of this and uh, started downsizing the company to save their own ass. Of course, the CEO wants his brand new fucking Porsche and shit like that, so he's not going to fire right hand man is a cock sucking friend <laughs> he's going to fire the little guy uh, I just so happen to be the little guy there so I don't feel bad I lost, I walked out of that door with seven other people on the same day I basically told them thank you with a smile on my face good luck Good luck hiring somebody who's going to do the same effort as I did. But anyway, so that's that's another key aspect, the economics of this 
repercussions of this COVID-19 hitting the fucking fan. Now, people don't really think about what they do. People are people are stupid. They're like lemons or lemmings. You know, they see one person do it, they think they got to do it too. A herd mentality. That's why. They, that's why you hear the term sheeple. And uh, people are a lot like sheep. They just run in a herd. You know, as soon as one does it, two does it, three does it, four does it, five does it. It's a. Uh, it's a uh, nothing but numbers. These guys end up doing it too. So if all these guys go buy useless shit like fucking toilet paper. Everybody else is thinking, "Oh my God, there must, there must be a gonna, there must be, there must be a problem. We gotta go do it too." So they all go bulk buy toilet paper. Now, what they don't realize is when this uh, problem does recede, because I gotta be, I gotta be honest, I have a. I have a good uh, good mind to think of the bright side of things. I believe that things are gonna go back to normal. Normal. That's another thing I'm gonna get to. Let me just say this: that there is gonna be no normal after this. There wasn't any normal after 9/11. And there's definitely not going to be a normal after this either. So, back to economics though. So because of the position that the United States has put itself in, we depend a lot on foreign countries to produce a lot of materials that we we use. And... A lot of it in pharmaceuticals are made in India and China. Now just think about that. How foolish it is that we've elected people that decided that their best bet was to put all their eggs in one basket and gamble that on the future of the American people. Sounds pretty stupid. And we have stupid people voting for stupid people who make stupid decisions. And the rest of us is like, that's pretty fucking stupid. The logical thinkers. Because there are people out there they want the mass of society to be easily controlled. They don't want critical thinkers. They don't want people to put connect the dots and figure shit out on their own and and be able to voice that and get other people to realize the screw job that it is and end up revolting against it or opposing it. Opposing a handful of people who profit from these stupid decisions while we have to pay for it ourselves. So, with that being said, where do you think we're going to get all the medication that we need if we do have a pandemic here in the United States? We already get 80 to 90% of our shit from China. What's going on in China? They have a problem. Not only that, but Italy has a problem now. Italy's and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna sell this materials to the highest bidder. I don't give a shit about Trump and relationships with our president. It's all about money and greed. So Italy, talking about Italy, Italy has a 
a huge problem. Now, another thing about this virus is that, you know, I was listening to Joe Rogan yesterday, and he had this this guy who basically investigates this uh, type of viral or viral um, agents like COVID-19 and, well, not specifically COVID-19, but you know what I mean, viruses in general and bacteria and I don't know what you call those. I'm not, I've probably heard the name, but I'm not that smart as well. I don't know if they're called bacteriologists or what. But anyway, uh, this guy was putting out some misinformation out there. And I'm not going to lie, when I first heard the first stupid thing out of his mouth was, is that this COVID-19 came from nature itself. And I was just thinking, dude, what? He's either stupid or willfully giving out bad information. It could be a mixture of both. I don't know. And then the second thing was is that once you beat this COVID-19, if you do catch it, it goes away. That's another stupid thing he said. The reality is, is that this thing comes back in people who actually overcome the in- the infection. Yeah, literally. It's like a zombie virus. And the problem is, is that once you beat it the first time, your immune system is so weak from the first attack that brought your body to its knees that you're, I mean, you're worn, man. You're, you're tired for fighting for your life against this 0.0125 micron beast. So I say that size because we'll go back to that at another point. Yeah, this beast is 0.0125 microns. And when you get reinfected with it, your chances are very high that you will die from this because your body is depleted. That's a scary fucking thought, man. That you get infected and... Oh! It's not it's not MERS. I think it was Ebola. It's spliced in with some type of attribute with Ebola. So, and I think I heard that just yesterday on on a podcast I was listening to. And uh, like I said, don't don't take it for face value. Do your own research. Excuse me. Do your own research. Look this stuff up. And only trust credible people. Only trust credible information from people who are literally risking their lives to tell us the truth. So, COVID-19 is actually spliced in with HIV delivery system and another attribute from Ebola. That's some scary shit, man. So basically, forgot what I was saying earlier before I had that epiphany thought of what I remember hearing just the day before. So the way this COVID-19 affects people and I know the names are scary. Ebola. So when people think of Ebola they think hemorrhaging. People are bleeding from their eyes, their ears, their mouth, their nose and they're fucking dying. It's not the way it happens. That it has a gain of function. So maybe, maybe they use Ebola for trans, for the ability to transmit from person to person a lot better than than uh, something else. So just remember, this thing is supercharged. 
it has things spliced into it to have the ability to be more infectious, maybe not as deadly. But we don't know this. Based upon the numbers from other places, which we can't trust the numbers from China. Those numbers are skewed, dude. They're not gonna wanna tell you the truth. They're, nobody's gonna take responsibility and say, yeah, man, we accidentally, we accidentally let this shit out. It was so-and-so person working at this lab at this time. And we're really sorry. No, they're gonna, guess what? They're already blaming the U.S. for this. They're saying that we released it in the United States. So, already people are pointing the finger. You know, it started in China. But the fact of the matter is, is that we were working on it. We had foreign individual students working on it as well. You know, paid by their government, like China, to send these people to come work on it. And they take that technology. They might not have taken the virus, but they took the technology back with them. And now there's, they're playing the blame game. You know, they're saying that China, you know, they... <laughs> People are, people are saying that it accidentally came out in China. China is saying that we intentionally did it to them. It makes no fucking sense. Right? You know, why would anybody intentionally let this get out and infect the entire world? There's a conspiracy behind that. You know, the fun thing about conspiracies is that it makes you think. It's like, oh shit, man, that could be, that could be so true. And what I'm, what I'm talking about, what am I talking about? What could be so true? You know, we've been having this economic struggle since 2008 that we were supposed to be expecting this bubbles and certain different markets to burst. And then we have problems with the Federal Reserve not doing what they need to do with interest rates. So, it's, uh, it's interesting. You know? That you hear, hey man, what if, what if they did this to do a world economic reset? That sounds pretty fucked up, but very plausible.